Before installing Tracker, let's check first if Java is installed in your computer. Go to Terminal or Command Prompt and type Java-Version. And if it shows any Java version number, then we can proceed. Type in the keywords Fizzlets Tracker in any search engine, and once the page is loaded, download the Tracker installer for Windows. Later, when the tracker is installed in your computer, be sure to watch these short tutorials. After downloading, run the installer. After installation, run the tracker program. Our sample video clip is about free fall. See the link on the description box below to download this clip. Open the video to load it on the tracker's video area. Choose the click settings to trim the video because not all of the frames in the video are relevant to our study. Our start frame is 0. Our step frame is 1, which means that we are not skipping any frames. The last frame we will be tracking is the 13th frame. Click the coordinate axis icon to show the XY axis. Hold the shift button so that the cursor becomes square. While doing this, click on your desired location of the origin. Next, Click the calibration icon to give the tracker an idea about the relative dimensions of the background and the target object. Let's use calibration stick to calibrate the meter stick in the video. Again, holding down the shift key, click the top left corner and bottom left corner of the meter stick. Type 1 then enter because the meter stick is 1 meter. Once the coordinate system and the scales are set, let's create a track so that we can collect data points from each frame of the video. Click the icon Create Track, then choose Point Mass because we will assume that the falling object can be represented by a point mass. Every time we consistently click on the same region of our target object, we are automatically transferred onto the next frame. While doing this, notice that the plot area and the data table area are recording the time and x and y positions of the object. Remember that if we have this data, then we can calculate other kinematic variables like velocity and acceleration. In the plot area, click plot then choose 2 to show two data plots. The first one is x versus time and the other one is y versus time. Right click on any data point then choose analyze to bring up the data tool table. Here click the analyze button to show the statistics and curve fits information. Apparently, the appropriate fit equation should take the form of a parabola, so we choose parabola. The coefficients of the trend line are summarized in this region. You can save the data points here as text file but later I'll show you that you can simply cut and paste it on an Excel file. Also, you can share the entire project as tracker file so you can email it or share it to your group mates. Finally, let's try the feature auto tracker where the tracker will be the one choosing the data points for you. First, click the Auto Tracker button and a coordinate axis will show up. Hold the Shift key then click on the desired position of the origin. Next, click Create button to create track. Click Control Shift to choose a very small region that the tracker will monitor. Once you click this region, the next frame will be loaded. Notice that for every template of small region you choose, the tracker will find a match from the next frame. If you are satisfied with the match given by the tracker, click search next. 
Due to this feature, the tracker will do the tracking for you. Continue clicking Search Next until you exhaust all the frames. With the use of Auto Tracker, you will have better set of data points. Let's examine the variables in projectile motion. Consider this X and Y axis. A projectile moves from the origin and lands back again on the ground level. The projectile has an initial velocity of V sub 0 and it is an at angle theta with respect to the ground. Its projection along the x axis is V sub 0 cosine theta and its projection along the y axis is V sub 0 sine theta. Again, the x component of initial velocity is V sub 0 cosine theta and the y component of the initial velocity is V sub 0 sine theta. In case you are given the components and you want to determine the initial velocity, just use the Pythagorean theorem because we can slide v not y to form a right triangle. The definition of velocity is displacement over time. But I can rewrite this in such a way x is directly proportional to time. And for projectile, the x component velocity does not change. Based on this equation, v not x is just a slope of x versus time plot. When it comes to vertical component of the projectile, vertical motion is under the influence of gravity. And the UAM equation that best describes vertical motion with the given variables v not y, time, and acceleration due to gravity is y equals y not plus v not y times time minus one half gt squared. Our equation for horizontal velocity component is obviously linear. While the equation for vertical velocity component is parabolic due to the y versus t squared relationship. In mathematics, the general form of a parabolic equation in x and y axis is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In y versus time plot, apparently, we have to replace x with time. Therefore, g equals negative 2 times a. Here's a clip of a bouncing ball that you can freely use. Let's use this video to demonstrate the application of tracker in analyzing video. Let's choose the start and end frame of the video clip in such a way it coincides with the starting point and landing point of the projectile respectively. Next, calibrate the metal ruler we have and enter 0.6 since the metal ruler has a length of 60 centimeters. For simplicity, position the origin of the coordinate at the starting point of the projectile. Assume that we can represent the ball as a point mass as if all of its mass is located at its geometric center. Then keep on clicking or tracking the ball until it reaches the landing point of the projectile. Display the x versus time and y versus time data plot. Here's the fun part. We can copy and paste the time, x, and y data points from this region to an Excel file. I'll just delete some unnecessary information because I already organized the Excel file. By the way, the mass of the ball is 0.275 kilograms. In column E, let's calculate V sub x by dividing x with time. I did not start with row 3 because division by 0 is not allowed. In column F, let's calculate V sub y by dividing y with time. In calculating kinetic energy, we need velocity square of the ball. Let's calculate V squared by adding the square of V sub x and square of V sub y. We already derived this equation earlier. Potential energy is mass times acceleration due to gravity times y. And kinetic energy is just one half times mass times V squared. Let's examine the x versus time plot of this setup. Insert scatter plot. For this plot, time is considered as the x values, while x is considered as the y values. To see the curve fit line, add chart element, then trend line, then display equation in R squared on the chart. From our previous discussion, the slope of x versus time plot is the horizontal component of velocity of the projectile. 
When the coefficient of determination is near 1.0, that means the dependent and independent variable are highly correlated. Let's try to look at y versus time using two options. First, we exploit the curve fitting option of tracker and then compare it with the trend line option of Excel. Using tracker's data tool, we update the fit equation into a parabola. This time, let's plot y versus time using Excel. To display trend line equation, click the chart. Then on chart tools, select design, then add chart element, trend line, more trend line options. We don't have option for parabola, but parabola is just a polynomial with highest exponent of 2. So we choose this one. In the process, we display the equation and R squared. Let's compare the equation coefficients generated by Excel with that of the tracker. Here are the coefficients A, B, C, and C from the tracker. And here are the coefficients from Excel trendline equation. Notice that they are similar at least to the highest significant figure digit. For other classes, you are just supposed to choose initial, middle, and final data points along the trajectory of the projectile in comparing mechanical energy. Here, I just examined the plot and video frames in the tracker that best estimates these locations. I prioritized observing symmetry because this will become handy when I compute for the time the ball reaches the peak and the time the ball lands on the ground level. To calculate the time for the object to go up, I just calculate t sub middle minus t sub initial. And for the time for the object to go down, I just calculate t sub final minus t sub middle. If you have multiple trials, then just get the mean or average value. Let me graph the potential energy versus time plot, the kinetic energy versus time plot, and the mechanical energy versus time plot. Notice that I don't have perfectly symmetric graphs with respect to the trajectory peak and that the plot for potential energy and kinetic energy do not mirror each other with respect to a certain axis. This is because I manually chose the regions of the ball where the tracker records the xy coordinates for each frame. When I estimate the geometric center of the ball, I'm literally guessing a specific region in the video. Also, friction might have influenced the motion of the ball. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.